question for you, Jamie. Yes. A picture of the Queen. Yes. Is that royalty free? Well, yes it is. Unless um, it's being sold commercially. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to Die Rolly. And that is the end of the episode. But no. whilst we've got you, right? Well, we've got you. Okay, so one of the questions we've been asked quite frequently um, by one person <laughs> once, and that was Will, uh, was what is a legacy game? And a legacy game is a throwaway game with a story, right? I'm going to let you explain this, and then I'll correct you when you're yeah. wrong. So when I think of a legacy game, I think of a game where you take a standard base game and it, the... As you work your way through the rules, through the game, based on various events, certain things open up to you or slammed, doored away from you and you can rip up cards and you can deface your board and the end of it, you can't play it again because it's all ruined and you put it on a bonfire. It's very close. Very yeah, close. Close, yeah. Yeah, so it's a game that evolves as you play, right? Well, you could put it in those simple words or you could put it in my long... Long, long. Yeah, if you've ever seen a computer game, we know what one of those things is. It's basically like a computer game where you have a story. Yeah. And at the beginning of the game, you start very low powered and the world looks a particular way. By the end of it, you've made some choices, things have changed, and at the end of it, it looks very different to how it originally began. So, this is a reasonably newish concept in board gaming. Past few years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's still one that um, divides the community as it's, to people it's that. It's very divisive. Yeah. Um, now, I played um, Pandemic Legacy Season 1, um, and I'm sure you have. Yes, I so have. So it's a good, it's a good um, basis for talking about. Okay. So, in Pandemic, you're playing effectively the first game of Pandemic. And depending on how you do, depends on whether you get new items, or you rip up cards, or you um, put stickers on a board, or whatever. Or new items become available to you. Now, at first, there was a lot of scepticism within my board gaming group because they would be given cards and it said, please rip this up. Now, that's quite a scary thing when you've paid £30 for a board game yeah. and you're being asked to, well, vandalise it. Yeah, and normally, it. normally these legacy games, two costs are around £40 to £60. When Panic yeah. Legacy, Legacy first came out, it's around £55 to £60. So it's a lot of money that you are... Basically tearing up. Yeah, and, and you can't play it again, because once you've played it, there's really limited replayability. Yeah, I mean, technically, you can play it again, but you don't really want to, because you've spent probably 12 to 15 real-life sessions in, I think, Pandemic Legacy. I, I did nearly 20 of those. Yeah. Um, and then you're not really going to want to go back to that particular game. So that's quite, um, that's quite an extreme game in the sense you really are destroying your game. On the flip side is a game like Gloomhaven, which purposely does, when it um, was kickstarted, also had um, a sticker set so that you could reuse the game again if you wanted to. Yeah. So the difference there is, is, is massive because Gloomhaven is going to cost you £80 upwards. It's a very big, heavy game and you're going to need a lot of time to play this. It's the equivalent of like trying to play, um, I guess like if you have the novel of Lord of the Rings, like the, yeah. how big that is, it's like that in board game format. There's a lot of time you're going to be spending in there and ripping up those cards which and you know, adding stickers to a board that you're never going to change again. Um, yeah, that can be quite daunting to people when they've spent upwards of, you know, £100 on, uh, on a game. So now that we understand what a legacy game is, the qu big question is, is they are way value for money. Are they something that um, you should get? or And what sort of circumstances should you buy one? Um, so for me, I have a regular board gaming group that I um, continuously play with the same four players. Unfortunately, one of those is Will, but still, you can't, you can't. Never mind. Um, now, I consider those players that I play with players that I will continually play for for years. And that's an important point, because if you're playing something like Gloomhaven, unless you can dedicate six months of your life to just playing Gloomhaven, it's going to take a very long time to finish. And so if you're going to buy a game like that, you have to know that you have the core player base to continue that game for. There's a kind of upfront promise between the players yeah. that you are going to 
you know, stretch it out and yep. you're happy to turn up every week and just play the same thing. Especially if you're the player bringing the game. You know, we split the costs of um, Pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Gloomhaven, one of the players in our group, actually owns that game. That's his game. So for him to entrust us with that game um, means that he's committed to us for a number of years. It's like a relationship, it really isn't is, it? It really is. Uh, for a number of years. Um, and more importantly, we're committed to him so that we can all go on this journey and story together. So my first, my first point on it is that you have to have enough people, enough players that are committed to want to play a legacy game. Yeah, so uh, the first legacy game I ever played was Risk Legacy. So it's the game, board game Risk, but a legacy version. So things change as you play, the board changes up. You can do certain things in certain countries which limit the, the bonuses you'd normally have there. And um, it took me, there's 15 games of this, yeah. took me two and a half years to actually complete it because there were five people and it's very hard to get those people back. And also, with Risk, it's one of those games where some people can get really offended because it's very much total gotcha. And when you've got five people all trying to get world domination, sometimes people are going to team up against one particular person a couple of sessions in a row, and that person will just go, actually, this isn't fun anymore. So I found when I was playing Risk Legacy, it wasn't especially fun for everyone. And by the end of it, we just wanted to get it done and finished because we had Gloomhaven on the way. Oh. Um, Pandemic Legacy, totally different story. We had four people, same people every every week we were playing this, and it was great fun, really fun story, and it was it was something that I was quite glad I'd spent the money and investment on doing it. And going forward, all the other games we're doing in Legacy, we've got the same people involved because of that initial kind of, yeah. Cool. I think that leads on to the second point, is pick your game. There are so many legacy games out there are different genres and different styles um there are more in certain types of areas but i mean if you can pick an area there is probably a a, a, a legacy game for it think about what that group of players is interested in you know there's no point if you're a group of players that likes ticket to ride for example rocking up with risk legacy that is only going to end in disaster and one that you're probably going to all fall out and maybe ruin your board grading group forever. Indeed. That's my idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, you know, I think you're quite right with that. So pick a game which, you, if it's the first legacy game you're playing, try to find one which is a game that you're used to playing. So for instance, Pandemic. Most people have played this game. If not, you should really give it a go. It's a very good casual gateway game. And if you know the basic rules for Pandemic, picking up Pandemic Legacy Season 1 is a good shout because you know the general basics of this and you can teach it very easily and everyone can get involved. And the kind of most important part about that is it's a legacy game where you're all on the same side. Risk Legacy is very hard to play because you're all against each other. And like I say, people can get felt like they're getting ganged up on. Uh, Betrayal Legacy is one where it's the game Betrayal at House on the Hill, yep. but a legacy format. And that one as well is another game which if you already know the base game it's a really good introduction to legacy games and i think that's a good turn into my final point there we go or our final point we'll, we'll see which I'm is just... not to confuse a legacy game with a campaign game because a legacy game is a game that typically has a one once playthrough yep. you know you can you know in theory play some of the game like gloomhaven um but a campaign game for example Star, Imperial Assault, right? Star Wars Imperial Assault is a really good campaign game. Um, and even the uh, new Lord of the Rings game, which is on an app, um, is a campaign game. Because the whole point of that is that you go, based on your your selections, you can come back and you can replay it. Um, but the point being is that you can come back and replay it at any point, yeah. and there's solo modes in there, or that you can just jump straight into an adventure halfway through. So. You've got that whole reset, right? Yes. So once you finish the campaign game, you can either go, yeah, I'll play that again with a different group of people, and you can just reset everything. Um, whereas Legacy Game, you can't reset unless there's a particular sticker pack or something extra which you can bring back into the game. Cool. So we haven't yet um, gone reviewed any Legacy Games or campaign games really on this channel, um, but we felt it was really important enough subject to really want to spread that spread that knowledge for yep. those who are new 
or maybe considering a campaign or maybe a legacy game um, and what's it about what do I need okay. um, and what sort of things yeah so we mentioned at the beginning it was very divisive yeah. um, the community in general is very much very pro legacy games where you rip up the cards and you make changes or very negative in the sense that actually I like the idea that the game progresses like a campaign but I don't like tearing stuff up and, and writing on cards and things like that. Um, my kind of thoughts on this, if I can quickly to put it out there. Of course you can. I see a legacy game like a video game. So I'm going to spend probably 40 to 50 pounds on a new video game. How often am I going to play that? I will probably play that for 15 hours maybe and I complete this whole story thing. I probably won't bother with multiplayer. I'll finish yeah. 15 hours. I've done that. Great. Board game wise, I'll pick up a board game and I'll probably play that once or twice a year. Maybe I've got a hundred odd board games and it's very rare I can play all those games all the time. If you get a legacy game, it's like you've got a computer game in the sense that you're going to be getting, you're spending about the same money, you're getting much more time out of it. And how often are you going to get a board game to the table again and again and again and again? You're not really because there's so many board games out there. Whereas a legacy game, you're going to be Pandemic Legacy for instance, you play that at least 12 games and you're getting your money's, money's worth back out of that. Yeah. I could spend £60 on a board game and get it out once or twice, or £60 on a legacy game and get that out 20 odd times. Yeah, and I think when you put it into that context, like um, we all have a Netflix or an Amazon or a Disney Plus subscription, and one of the things that we're really in interested in is binging on a series or maybe a set of um, audio books or whatever, and we got into that culture. And I think that is a lot what the legacy games give you, is that you're kind of binging on a story, binging on a on a thing. So a legacy games is is you generally don't tend to see a huge amount of spoilers on on the internet, and most of the time you've got into it, and you're like, oh, what's next? What's next? Because you don't have the rule book that's going to tell you the final outcome. You have to play through that game to get to the end. So the legacy game, in terms of value for money. Yeah, absolutely, it's a used want, but you've got to put it in context of, well, I have my Netflix, I have my Amazon, I have my board games, um, my um, computer games, and what I want to do is just get my way through that story and that adventure. Um, and that's where legacy games come into their own, is that you don't know, you don't know what the outcome is until you get to the end. Yeah, and the thing as well with legacy games, I mean, campaigns do the same thing. Yeah. The thing with legacy games is it's more of a shared experience. So for instance, when you're playing a particular game like Pandemic Legacy, you might do something which is totally different to anyone else who's playing that board game, and you've all got that same experience. One of the games I played, someone turned out to be a traitor, and we all had a good laugh about it. And then, you know, months later, we're still referring back to that, oh, do you remember that moment where this person turned out to be a traitor? That's really fun. Anyway, we hope that you have found this useful. We hope that you found this interesting. Um, maybe you have different views on this to us. Yeah, I think we should summarise, really, your, your kind of three main points here. Yeah. Which were, choose choose the right group of people to play this with. Correct. You've got to know your group. You've got to know the game. Yeah. And what was the third one? Value for money. I'm going to have value for money. Cool. And I think what we'll probably do at this moment is just pause so that Will can, in this space here, just put those three points, just in that space. Cool. Now I mean, we didn't have to pause because he could have just stretched the clip out, right? Like if he just done a still shot and that would have stayed. We but didn't he, have he to didn't do that, so you out. know. And he'll probably won't even do that, and it would just be just once, like once, that, right? Once again, just some magic. Cool. So now that you know those three points and um, they're there, and um, please make sure that you uh, find us on our social media channels, which include. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you have to be on YouTube, which you are, why don't you uh, give us a like, a subscribe, <laughs> leave some comments. And leave some comments.